all wild cats are very important to ecosystem functioning because they are, they are apex predators. They are the top of the food chain. People might be familiar with the tiger and the lion in, in the, the old world, but in the Western Hemisphere, the jaguar is the only truly large cat so the jaguar is an endangered species. The northernmost extent of its range is here in southern Arizona in the boot hill of New Mexico. Uh, have had over the last 15 or so years, I think we've had four to five different males. As a biologist, I have always been fascinated by the cats for my entire career. We actually have cameras in 16 mountain ranges across uh, the southern half of, of Arizona and New Mexico. The project is designed to, to survey and monitor for jaguars and, and ocelots throughout this landscape. They're a very secretive and cryptic animal. They have those spots because they hide well and it helps them hide well. They avoid humans and therefore we don't see them very often. Well, we only have the one known male jaguar in the Santa Ritas, probably from a source population in Mexico. These individual males will go from one mountain range to another to another and may spend possibly even several years in what we call that transient phase. But that facilitates gene flow across the landscape. Because of its unique location between the Chihuahuan and Sonoran and Mojave Deserts, along with the Sky Island ecosystems that we have here with these tall mountain ranges and low desert valleys, it really provides for a wide range of habitats which encourages a really abundant biodiversity. So that's one of the really unique things that's going on here in the southeastern Arizona Skylands region. Another thing is, um, you know, these are pretty productive ecosystems, so they provide uh, so things like forage for cattle ranching, but also for wildlife so we can support um, large populations of undulate species, for example. The important thing for us was to stay involved in the process and make sure that we knew when the cameras were being checked, make sure we can adjust our management, if there's a way we could adjust our management to put us at less risk. It's kind of difficult when you're dealing with a predator that can cover vast swaths of, of area whether it's the Mexican wolf or the spotted owl or now the jaguar, uh, people are very polarized in some of these issues. I think residents of rural areas are very much fearful of regulation. And while I know there's a need for regulation, a lot of times there's just too much regulation out there and it prevents us from doing the types of things that we need to do to maintain these open spaces. This is the time I came down and spoke for the first time to the Malpai and said, we'll do critical habitat over my dead body. I'm still alive, although this meeting isn't over yet. Um, 2006, we got sued again. Uh, the court did not agree with us. Didn't have a lot of choice at that point. The judge said, you will reassess whether critical habitat is prudent and given the unambiguous wording of his order. Uh, we felt we had no choice but to say, yes, sir, it's prudent. We will proceed. And I believe the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is correct. And I believe this should never have been critical habitat because it's not critical habitat. It's, it, it's not. So Jaguar critical habitat's been designated um, from the Babakivri Mountains to um, the San Luis Mountains in southern New Mexico. And that includes the Baba Kivri Mountains, the Santa Rita Mountains, and uh, the Huachucas, um, the Whetstones, and the Canelo Hills, and then out towards the, the San Luis Mountains in New Mexico. So it's a pretty broad range of area that's been designated critical habitat. Well, critical habitat is only applicable to federal actions. So if you're a permittee on a federal land like the Forest Service, 
the federal agency has to consider the effects of issuing that grazing permit on the species at hand. The concern from the rancher's point of view, and I, I think it has to do with historical interactions they've had with endangered species. I think it has to do with the general idea that when people have lines drawn around their property or their grazing allotments, why is that line there? That generally indicates that something on one side of the line is different than it is on the other side of the line. So I can see that concern. The critical habitat designations are on the ranches. They are where the ranches are. That's where the open space is. That's where the unfragmented areas are. And you know, this is just one of those types of regulation that that uh, I, I feel is kind of just forced on us uh, uh, through litigation, basically. Uh, in that talk, I went through the list of features that we believe are essential to jaguars. Those are things like rugged topography, distance to water, uh, vegetative cover, uh, canopy cover, I should say. None of those are really influenced by grazing, so we don't see a concern. We are, uh, we are hoping that that is the case, but we will be watching out. They, they do have a lack of confidence in the system. I think the, the court case that compelled us to, to designate critical habitat is, is fresh in their minds. Um, but I think this is a much different case. We evaluate actions all the time that have adverse effects on critical habitat. But only if it gets to be so egregious that the if action is going to drive the species unacceptably toward extinction would it be prohibited under the Endangered Species Act. A lot of people don't understand that. Within what I think is a relatively short amount of time, people will realize that critical habitat is not having any effect on their day-to-day -day lives. The ranch lands provide ecosystem benefits to the rest of us who live in urban areas or even in small towns in that, you know, providing open space, which again is probably for wildlife the most critical thing, keeping these wildlife populations healthy and intact. Uh, development and sprawl and subdivisions and infrastructure is the greatest threat that we have to, to wildlife and especially a large wide-ranging species like the jaguar. And this, the same holds true for the mountain lion and the bear and even, even, even deer to some degree, is that these animals that need large landscapes need intact open landscapes. Keeping these ranches intact is, again, the best thing we can do.